I'm Sam, a uh, software engineer here on the uh, kids coding team at Google. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about NPM with Blockly. So a uh, big theme at last year's conference was that people wanted easier ways to integrate Blockly into their applications. Um, if you're a web app developer, you're probably familiar with NPM. And it's almost the de facto way of kind of building web apps these days. Um, and uh, developers don't really need to worry about exactly what um, is inside of each of these modules, as long as they are able to kind of import what they need and Webpack or some other uh, bundler is just able to sort of pull in all of these dependencies into your application. So, um, so the obvious thing was to actually publish Blockly in, onto NPM. Um, but there's a bit more than just publishing our, our built files. We actually need to interface with all of these bundlers in such a way that they can understand what each of our modules are. So over the last um, six months or so, we've actually taken hold of the Blockly package, which was actually owned by one of our community members. And they had just published um, the sources onto NPM. So if you just wanted a way to actually acquire the sources, that was an OK way to do it. You still needed to configure Webpack or your bundlers to actually know where all the built files and what to pull into your application. Or you could just copy things over into some public directory or something and then uh, import it like this, which is kind of the traditional way that we've seen um, so far of how you actually include Blockly in your application. Um, so since then, we've actually taken hold of the package. And now we own it, and we can publish to it. <laughs> Um, which was actually quite a, an interesting process. Um, OK, so this is, this is what we've traditionally done. Um, and uh, with NPM, we uh, are able to actually um, sort of surface each of our modules as uh, a, so we've decided to go with a UMD module. And part of the reasoning for that, if you've uh, know what UMD is. It's sort of just a way to actually include multiple different module systems. So JavaScript has quite a few, almost seven, I think. Um, and a lot of bundlers out there are able to interact with things that are built in a different module system. So something could be built with system.js, and it can just kind of pull it in, wrap it around, and be able to include it in your different module system. Let's say you used AMD or something like that. Um, so. Um, the most popular ones, and it's like somewhat incompatible in some ways, are CommonJS and AMD. And that's why we have something that's a UMD, which is just a way to say, I want to be able to use the same module for both whether it's being used in CommonJS, which is what Node uses, um, as well as AMD, which is one of the um, module systems for web developers. Um, and so if we do that, then we're able to use the same NPM package, the same modules, in both environments. And that was one of the big goals that we had, is that we don't necessarily want to publish different applications for Node developers versus web developers. You just want Blockly, we'll give you Blockly, and you don't need to worry about the internal details of how we're doing that. Um, so this is kind of part of that. And the other nice thing about that is that um, we also are able to publish TypeScript um, definition files as well. So if you're a TypeScript developer, then as you import these modules, you will get the types that are relevant to these modules. Um, and uh, all sorts of autocomplete and IntelliSense and things like that will just show up. We do have a third. Um, so in that UMD module, we do publish also for global. And that's not as useful, except in some test environments. It's just a way for us to essentially do what we traditionally have done, which is allow you to actually include things with script tags. But it's actually just still the module. It's just able to actually figure out that, actually, I'm not in a module system. I'm just in the web page, and I can just load the actual um, things the same way we used to load things. Um, OK, so how do you get started? So it's, if you've used NPM before, and I assume that's why you're here, um, it's as simple as just including it as one of your dependencies and hitting NPM install, and then you've got Blockly in your application. Well, you've got Blockly as a dependency installed on your computer, but you'd actually need to still import it into your application. So um, as you uh, develop with that, one of the ways that you can import it is just by using import Blockly from Blockly. Um, so part of the talk today isn't really about how NPM works, but, also, but about what you're actually importing when you do this. So this is just a default import of Blockly, which is going to include 
um, some of our submodules. And we've decided these are the defaults. So when you do this, you're actually including Blockly Core, which is essentially equivalent to Blockly underscore compressed. You're including the built-in blocks, which is Blockly blocks underscore compressed, the JavaScript generator, and the English lookout files. So if you're using a different language, that's not going to work for you. If you want a different generator, that, such as Python, that's also not going to work for you. So, and if, if you want to optimize your application, for example, if you don't use any of the built-in blocks and you don't want to actually ship those, source, those um, built files, then you don't want to do just this. You actually want to be more specific in what you're importing. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's basically the equivalent of doing just that in this old world. And so if you want to be more specific, that's what you would do. So you would actually in instead include the submodules. So in this case, I'm including Blockly from Blockly slash core, which is the core, the um, Blockly underscore compressed. You'll import the blocks, which is the built-in blocks. I'm importing the Python generator in this case and the French locale files. And this is just a way for me to say that, hey, this is actually the um, telling Blockly that to use this specific locale, so set locale down here. So I've managed to include the Python generator there with the French locale files. If I'm in Node, it's going to look pretty similar. Node uses require instead of import, so more or less the same kind of format. And I haven't changed any of the submodules that I'm using. Everything's referencing the same thing, um, but, I'm, but I'm in Node here. And if for some reason you use AMD this way, then that's how you would use it. <laughs> um, I think this is require.js. OK, so that's um, so um, that's how you would include Blockly and the specific um, submodules. Uh, and so what we've actually done, we've also added uh, a number of samples. So um, we know that a lot of people work in different frameworks, some of the popular ones. We don't really want to make any specific uh, judgment about what is necessarily the best way to go. But we have some of the mo more commonly used frameworks out there, samples for them. So that includes um, a React, Angular sample, a Vue sample. Those are kind of the, 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 the hot um, web frameworks today. Uh, there might be more. And so this is a call also for you guys. If you um, use a different framework, please build a sample. It's, it will help other people. And it's as simple as just kind of using what that basic framework uses as boilerplate and just adding Blockly into it and publishing it onto this, um, this repo. So we also include a Webpack, a Node sample, a Require.js sample. And then we also have a UMD sample. And that, just to kind of clarify between what I was mentioning as UMD earlier, this is actually what the, the, the four core blocks wrapped into one package. And that just lets us um, do things like uh, have people get it just from unpackage.js, which is kind of a CDN that says, I just want Blockly. I'm not too concerned about exactly picking and choosing my, um, my uh, modules, and I just want everything in the, in the one file. Um, so yeah, so there are samples to help you get started. And that's the list of them there. OK, and so I did mention TypeScript definitions earlier. Um, so yeah, like I said, they're bundled in. If you use TypeScript before, generally one of the ways that, that um, people get the TypeScript definitions is by installing a different package. Uh, usually it's underscore. Uh, uh, on definitely type, so at typed, at type slash, um, you know, blockly. But we decided to actually include them as part of the package. It's actually a fairly common, well, more common thing these days to just kind of bundle them in, um, and then you don't have to worry about acquiring the, the um, TypeScript definitions yourself. Um, and for Node.js support, like I said, it's all included with same sub sub modules. You don't have to change any of the names. Um, and that's just going to be that's just going to work in Node. We do have a JS DOM dependency, which um, will npm will take care of installing that, and that's just our way to actually be able to use the XML serializer and deserializer um, in in Node. So what we've um, so the the package has been out for about a couple of months now, um, and um, so far, we've seen a few community members kind of adopt it, not just for their own applications, but people are building other 
layers of um, packages out there. So if you're in the React world, um, we have uh, a community member that's built a Blockly React component, which is based on the official Blockly NPM package. So if you know how NPM works, that will actually acquire under the hood our package. But you don't have to actually worry about importing that yourself. If you're just in React, you can just import Blockly re React, and you will get the entire stack of, um, of dependencies there. Um, and yeah, so it's only been out there for a few months. Hopefully, we'll see more wrappers around this just to kind of help you get started in that specific world. Um, you know, a, a Blockly React compare. If you look at some of the samples, um, it's doing a couple of things to kind of mesh the two worlds together, uh, injecting Blockly at the right time. In, in React, that's, you know, when you actually load the component. Um, and so that's just kind of helping even further bridge the gap for somebody that just wants Blockly in a specific framework. All right, and I can now take some questions. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So the currently the way that the package is, is published, um, the TypeScript definitions only work if you use that default, the import Blockly from Blockly. If you're using a submodule, I didn't quite set it up right, which I know how to set it up right now. So um, hopefully the next release they'll be up, and you can actually import the submodule um, and still get the, the the right definition files. Um, but until then, you you. you that's kind of the only way to use that. There is a um, there's a uh, a way to get around that, and that is to include the triple slash director yourself. So if you just reference it, add add that a reference path in your application that references the node underscore modules slash blockly slash blockly dot d dot ts, um, that will just sort of include Blockly for you, and then you could still kind of use Blockly slash core and Blockly slash blocks, that sort of thing. Yes? You mentioned that getting the Blockly NPM package is a little bit interesting. Yeah. Is it, is it a good story? Um, it's, it's just that somebody else owns it, and NPM want to do their due diligence and make sure that not some random person is trying to acquire some other package. They're pretty good about um, kind of, it's a community driven thing. So they're pretty good about transferring things like that. They know that people kind of um, lose track of things or move on to other things. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a just lengthy process to sort of prove that you're who you say you are and also that, you know, you mean no harm. <laughs> yeah. Cool.